That's awesome. I I think of speaking of processes here, processes, nodes, commands, activity. You must be talking our, about run deck. I, I that I am. Well, I can talk on that today, um, as I have put together uh, the show notes and slaved away uh, over them over the past uh, couple of hours here. So, uh, more than happy to to present on these now. I will preface a lot of this with saying um, we are going over the application interface here. This is not going to be as as in depth, right? Especially on a podcast, you know, even a, even a video podcast like this. This, this is just not the medium uh, to to really get our hands into this. Um, I am still as I as I uh, have in the past and will continue to do. Uh, I'm going to be going over how we're using this, right? Our experiences with this, how we found this to be what has been useful to us. To, and today we're going over the activity uh, as well as the nodes and commands section of this. Um, so it, the the breakup of this is, is somewhat arbitrary, um, simply that the activity I'm going to be able to speak a little bit more on the nodes and the commands. There's not a whole lot to to dig into. Uh, so to, to start with the activity, um, I of course link to the docs uh, right off the bat. Um, they, they are community curated, right? I mean, this is, this is the canonical place to go and search for, uh, features that are available, uh, for ways to do things and, and just kind of to get a sense of, of what's available to you, uh, to plagiarize their introductory introduction to activity though, uh, they start with, uh, execution history for commands and jobs is stored by the Rundex server. Execution history can be filtered and viewed inside the activity page. So this is the page that you would go to to review any jobs that have been ran. Um, of course, with any kind of automation front end, you're going to be running jobs. And these jobs are going to have output and they're going to have results. Um, they're also going to have parameters and you know, you might want to keep a history of how well they've been doing and, you know, um, how successful they've been doing. And Rundeck does this. Uh, this this is what the activities page is all about. So it's going to show you the jobs that it had ran. And by default, it just spits out all of them. Uh, so previously, when we were talking on cleaning up the executions, uh, this is what we were talking about limiting. Um, and I took a screenshot directly from our instance. And I did manage to capture it here. The one, the the, the run, uh, the second actual running process here is one, two, three, four, five, six. So to give you, to give you an idea of how many jobs we run, that is an integer. That is not simply me counting. So that's uh, job 123,456. That's quite a few jobs. That's that's a decent amount of jobs. Um, that is starting when we ran all of our health checks every five minutes from this, this CNC machine, though. So I would expect it to be quite large. However, we're not keeping all of those logs like we, we talked about before. I mean, it's 60 days, I believe, that we're, we're keeping um, or 90 days. I forget. Uh, either way, we're we're not storing all the way back to the beginning of time here. However, the ones that we do store are going to be available to us through this interface. And I point out a couple things in this interface, just real simple things. Um, I have I have uh, three kind of bullet points here, and these are the things really that I look at um, when I'm looking through my jobs. The first thing here is what are the running jobs? So yes, it does actually show you the running jobs in addition to the completed jobs. Uh, so it will <clears throat> it will show you uh, the percentage uh, completion based on previous executions. Uh, it'll show you the date and time. Uh, it'll show you which job is running and along with the parameters uh, that it ran with and what user ran the job. Uh, it also shows you the status of the job. So besides the running jobs, uh, the completed jobs will report as either successful, uh, marked by a green check mark and a OK text, like a like a one OK, which is the number of nodes 
Um, but for us, there's always going to be one. Just um, one. Or a failed job, which is marked with a red dash and a one failed text. Um, so those uh, completed jobs. There's also um, stopped jobs, I, I, I guess, um, I, I, I left out there. But really, the only ones that I'm concerned about are, are going to be the succeeded or the failed jobs. Um, note that the currently running jobs do need to be refreshed to get the latest update on this page um, or the auto refresh box in the top right hand corner selected. Uh, and this kind of brings us back to our run deck is an interface on top of an API. Um, instead of automatically refreshing or you know providing a socket type feedback system, it's just going to want to pull the API to see where the job is at, much like uh, Jack actually already does uh, with his scripting in Portal. Um, and then, you know, what what do these actually do? Well, well, these are simply entries in a list, uh, and selecting any one of them will take you to their log outputs, where you can review the output, any any details, and and um, everything else about them. Like for instance, this doesn't exactly say here uh, in the summary how long it took. If you wanted to find that out, you would want to go into the details page um, and, and much, much more is available in there as well. The other note I have on activity is uh, regarding searching for prior executions. So searching, I say here, is most successful when using the name field to search the name of the job you would like to find. The rest of the filters likely aren't going to be of much help. Uh, from there, you can look through the job executions to find the one you were looking for. Typically, that's going to be one that's recent. Uh, something that springs to mind for me is looking for different uh, environment creation runs, right? Because every time we create an environment, um, if we're just doing a temporary throwaway, we let Rundeck and the script that creates it for us create the vault password for us. We don't we don't rely on ourselves to come up with a random vault password. So. We, we let it create those for us, and then we use those subsequently uh, to, to do any kind of testing variable manipulation that we need. When I'm going to find those, um, I will look for any create new environment runs, and then I will look at all those that are sorted um, chronologically with the newest being on top and find the one I'm looking for by looking at the parameters. Now you would think, hey, Andrew, why not just search for the parameter? Well there's no field to do that. Um, and, and I do, I do point that on documentation here. There's currently no way to search by options, um, or the variables that are passed to the execution, uh, but they are displayed on the front, which makes it easier than it would have been if I would have had to gone through each of the pages in detail manually. Uh, now there is something I didn't put in the documentation because I wasn't exactly sure how to say this succinctly. However, when you go to run a job, like if, you, if you're at that tree view, the main, the main jobs view, and you go into a job, at the very bottom, there's going to be a tab uh, that says activity. And that's basically a predefined filter for all of the activity of that job. So it's, it's basically doing the exact same thing, which is why I kind of left it off the documentation. I just want to say, hey, just just if you're if you're brand new to this, you haven't discovered that yet, that's fine. Just go to the activity section and find it there. Um, but if you are, um, say, if I ran five different, you know, RCR runs, and I'm looking back and, and I was like, oh yeah, the one two runs ago failed or whatever. And I'm still on that page. I know that at the very bottom, I can just pull up that activity and go right to the one that I ran uh, two times ago. Uh, so, and that's where I find it the most valuable, honestly, is under activity for the actual job itself. I, I have not looked under, uh, is there a default activity page that shows everything? Yeah, it's right under and, the job section on the left-hand side of you. So I have not used that. I do not use that. I actually go specifically to the job, and then I look at the activity pane under that specific job. So when you mention, you know, run compositional role, that's that's a bad example. When you run, create new environment is the one I automatically go to because I'm like, all right, well, we just created the environment. What's the password? I know I created it. Uh, I usually end up scrolling over. I, I know we have the podcast for showing graphs, pictures, but 
basically are able to look at the parameters and say, all right, what, what environment is this? What throwaway environment is this? Oh, it's this one. And I'm able to click on it and go, okay, that's where the password that was generated is. That's where I, that's where I usually go. I tend to go directly underneath the jobs. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and, uh, like I said, this is an API driven, uh, application web, web application. So if you're able to make those, uh, linkages, you know, intelligent like that, there's no reason not to just take advantage of that. So I'm, I'm all for that. Uh, hopping over to nodes and commands then, um, once again, I'm, I'm linking to the documentation here and, and, and especially because these aren't something that I've really had called to use per se. Uh, it's helped, uh, sometimes in, in testing, uh, just being able to to get down to the, the bottom of things, but I would definitely go to the documentation, right? If, if you're going to get started on these, first of all, there's so many different ways to connect to different nodes um, because not only is it, you know, a server, but it's a, an executable on a server. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be a, a WinRM connection to a Windows jump host, or it's going to be an SS, SCP SSH connection to a, a Linux jump host, or, you know, may, maybe even network devices or uh, Kubernetes, you know, and, and this could be, this could be one of any different number of things. Uh, and this is where Rundex extensibility is not a place that we've touched yet. Um, and, and nor have we really had a need to, but to go over our understanding, of nodes and commands. Uh, a node, um, I am also going to steal from their documentation, is a resource that is either a physical or virtual instance of a network accessible host. Nodes have a few basic attributes, but a node's attributes can be extended to include arbitrary named key value pairs. Attributes typically describe the property of a node or reflect the state of the node. One of a node's built-in attributes is called tags, which is a list of classifications or categories about that node. Um, so we should see that Rundeck by default is meant to contact all of the nodes independently, as opposed to how we're running it as a simple front end onto the CLI. Uh, that being the case, however, we do know a couple of tricks on how to do that efficiently. For instance, uh, in order to get a listing of all nodes, which by default, it shows none of them. It doesn't show all of them. It shows none of them. So to get all of them, you would place a dot asterisk into the filter on the top. That being the common regex for any character repeating. So it's, it's literally show me everything that matches the pattern that matches everything. Uh, and then in the Docker container, um, to, to kind of expand on how we use it, in the Docker container, Rundeck will always list itself as a node, and the executable directory is the home directory of the user that runs the Rundeck service, in Docker's case, the Rundeck user. So when I go into the container to troubleshoot something and I want to find where Rundeck has, has executed something or, or where a temporary directory has been set up, um, if it's anything that's not marked in an absolute path, it's going to be relative to the home user's directory. So that's why it's important to know that it's going to be the home run deck uh, directory. Uh, and then node actions here, I think from the documentation was always, was also interesting to me. Um, the node actions menu contains links to run a command. Um, which choosing that item will forward your browser to the commands page or to create a job choosing this menu item will forward you to the job create page um, and enter the filter expression in the edit form. So by default, we include all nodes available. Um, but if you have a filter instead of dot asterisk that you would like uh, to either run a specific command on or create a job off of, uh, then you can do that straight from that filter that you just carefully crafted to get the exact nodes that you wanted. 
Um, and, and speaking of running a command, uh, the, the last thing here for us to go over uh, are those commands. Um, so what is a command? Well, it is literally exactly what you would think it is. So a command is a single executable string executed on a node. Rundeck invokes commands on nodes via a node executor, which evaluates the command string and executes it. Executors. Node executors evaluate the command string in a data context containing information about the node resource. Command strings can reference this data and thus avoid hard coding node or environment specific values. Uh, so a note about commands, the default node executor for the local Rundeck server uh, node is uh, sh. So it's, you know, slash bin slash sh. So anything that you're going to be running there is going to be run through a shell. So just like you were, you know, on a command line prompt uh, with, with the shell, it's, it's just going to be run, uh, which means uh, that you're simply going to type into the command field what you would like to be ran in order to execute it on the node. Right. This is going to be typically one-off commands or status retrieving commands, nothing. You're not going to do anything fancy here. Um, however, this is format in the same style as job steps, what we had briefly touched on earlier. Um, so they can also use any of the same tricks that you use on those job step steps. So like we, we use the export to export variables and then like build up a variable string after a bunch of inline if statements and then come to an actual um, exec uh, execution. So like execution, an actual playbook yeah. execution or a, a Python script execution and then pass the arguments there. Uh, you can do pipes, you can do subshells, you can do evaluations, you know, anything that you can do in in a shell, you can do in that command prompt there. So feel free to whip out your CLI foo and and craft something that's going to do exactly like you want it to. However, the temptation is always, all right, if this is going to be something I run once off and I'm going to put all this effort and energy into it, is there a possibility that I'm going to run it in the future? And if so, wouldn't it just be better to be ran as a job, right? It, would it? Would right. It, wouldn't it be right. better for me to spend, you know, the five minutes creating a job, setting this up so that I can run it over and over again? Um, so something to think about. Keep in mind that the activity does hold the history of commands as well. So if you do need to rerun a command, you can find it in the activity as long as you're not, you know, wiping it out. Um, well, the one thing I can think of for executions and this would be a very odd one is that if uh ssh access isn't granted for users but it's granted via the run deck interface so essentially if you need to run a command and it's not a job basically you just want to I, i'm trying to think of a good example like df you know just want to check the space on the on a server now i don't know why you would not let s some users shell in you know what fine don't let application developers shell in just let them run it from the from run deck where it's auditable right you can see who's running what commands on what servers yep and then allowing them to just run whatever commands that you know you can run whatever command you want on your app server but you're gonna have to run it through run deck we're not gonna let you and whoever and you're gonna be running it as sign a right on specific user with a specific right. connection so right that can that can also kind of whittle away at the potential for abuse there. 